President Buechel's stance against gender ideology in education reflects a deep concern for the future generation's well-being. He emphasizes the importance of traditional values in subjects like mathematics and history while rejecting ideologies that go against nature, God, and family. Don't miss what is gender ideology, according to President Buechel, and why does he oppose its inclusion in schools? How does President Buechel propose to improve the educational system in his country? What are some key values that President Buechel believes should be integrated into the curriculum? President Buechel, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. I am the National Director of Moms for Liberty, an organization that is responsible for commissions to push this gender ideology out of schools. We mothers are tired of living this Marxist ideology in schools. We mothers are tired of living this Marxist ideology in schools. The complex interplay of emotional responses and ideologies in education, highlighting the challenges faced by parents in this dynamic environment. I know that this is on a global level. Yes. You, what are you doing in your country for this? Well, we don't. We do not allow these ideologies in schools and universities. I think it is important. Also, not only that the curriculum does not carry this gender ideology and all that stuff, but it is also important that parents be informed and have each voice and vote in what your children will learn. It is also important that parents be informed and have eight voice and vote in what your children will learn. Parents must actively engage with the educational landscape not just be involved. Creating educational content based on democratic principles aligns with family values and fosters an environment for the holistic development of future leaders. We trust in our children, which is what is most valuable to us. We trust in our children, which is what is most valuable to us. Parents prioritize the well-being and careful upbringing of their children, viewing them as invaluable and deserving of trust. That we entrust to the educational system to be taught a useful things in your life, mathematical biology, things that are important for their learning. And then they come and they want to put pseudosciences in them, want to bring things contrary to nature into it. Also paid for by tax money. Clear paid for with taxes. But other than that, I think in the end I wouldn't mind paying. If they had a real education, we wouldn't mind paying if they had a real education. Parental dedication involves a profound commitment to crafting an educational path for their children. This commitment relies on a deep understanding of the fundamental principles guiding education. Based on the academy. But they make us pay to have an education contrary to nature, contrary to God, contrary to the family, contrary to what parents want. That is the real danger, and in the schools it must be eradicated, because it is not a no, it is just like that what happens, is a plan to destroy the future generation. A plan to destroy the future generation. The profound curiosity surrounding the future well-belling and ethical integrity of the next generation. It suggests that this curiosity extends beyond mere academic interests, encompassing broader societal concerns and moral values that are crucial for the survival of society. And that's how it is you see the future of education. What would be ideal for you in education with God in schools? What it would be like think it is important to get back to each other God in the schools to resume the morale of civility to, to get back to each other God in the schools to resume the morale of civility. Inclusive education goes beyond just imparting knowledge. It integrates ethical values and civic virtues, aiming to weave spiritual and moral teachings into the educational framework. We learn traditional things such as the academic, mathematics, history, etc., but also that without A make new A subjects other than the ones they want to bring in, but for example, and finance, of course, also what things that are useful in people's lives. What things that are useful in people's lives? We're delving into the world of practical and enriching education, focusing on a pragmatic curriculum design. This method acts as a beacon, helping students tackle real-world challenges with skill and agility. For example, in school, we were never taught finance, and it is important that people, I say, if you want to enter curriculum, the new one, want to modernize is fine, but let's do it in productive things for people, productive for and things that us. We would be happy if they would taught our children, even if they didn't show it to us. No one is against modernizing. What we are against is the insertion of ideologies, anti-nature, anti-God, anti-God, anti amway that does not fit in our school. Absolutely, President Bugle. You would give us a greeting to our listeners and followers of Parents in Action, the program I am running? 
Of course, a big greeting to all the the entire parent audience in action. Aid a lot of work always to God's will and let us continue to fit for what is best for our children. Let us continue to fight for what is best for our children. The unveiling requests highlight the responsibilities of parents and educators in shaping children's character, serving as both protectors and influencers. This journey prepares children for a life grounded in productivity and morality, crafted through the collaborative efforts of their guides. Thank you very much. In essence, President Buchel's actions underscore the critical need to prioritize education that aligns with societal values and prepares children for practical life skills. This move serves as a protective measure against the infiltration of harmful ideologies, ensuring a brighter future for generations to come. In championing the role of parents' voice and note in their children's education, President Naib Bukel endeavors to grant individuals the freedom to shape their essence, values, and beliefs without undue external influence. This approach not only upholds respect for individual autonomy and responsibility, but also reinforces parents' rights. President Buchel's recurrent allusions to contemporary to nature, contemporary to God, and opposition to anti-family ideologies suggest the existence of fundamental truths or values that transcend human construct. The push to introduce gender ideology into education can be perceived as an attempt to undermine or distort perceived natural truths or orders. Such endeavors might be construed as anxiety stemming from the challenge or alteration of established meanings or social structures posing a potential threat to individual identity and coherence, advocating for an educational vision centered on fundamental academic subjects and practical life skills, including finance, is deemed valuable for students' future lives. Prioritizing practicality over ideology is believed to enhance individuals' capacity to navigate and explore meaning in the real world. Education, according to President Naib Buchel, should equip individuals with the knowledge and skills necessary to fulfill personal responsibilities and contribute meaningfully to society. This stands in contrast to endorsing ideologies that may seem divisive or disconnected from real-life challenges. Buchel's assertion that introducing gender ideology in schools is a plan to destroy the future generation underscores concerns about the potential threat to the continuity of cultural, moral, and social values passed down through generations. This viewpoint aligns with the meaningful continuation of community and cultural identity over time, reflecting a fundamental human interest in heritage. Analyzing the discourse reveals a fundamental fear of losing control grappling with identity crises, and witnessing the erosion of shared meaning that binds communities together. The focus shifts to the psychological implications of ideological changes on an individual's identity, emphasizing the importance of choice and parents' rights in defining existence and underscoring the need for a sense of belonging and continuity within a community. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content, and although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.